You know, there's a really fine line uh, between what prosecutors will do and what prosecutors should do. And you just heard Ken uh, really narrowing that down. You have some discretion, right? So I want to bring in two of our expert minds to discuss just that. Dave Arenberg is the state attorney for Palm Beach County in Florida and a former member of the Florida Senate. And Dr. John Duffy is a psychologist specializing in relationships, parenting, teens and families. He is also the author of the book Parenting the New Age uh, Teen in the Age of Anxiety. Welcome to both of you. Dave Ehrenberg, I'm going to begin with you because you're a prosecutor. And I just said those words. Prosecutors have discretion. There's a big difference between what they can do, and what they should do. What do you think is going to happen? This is your state, and this 10-year-old is somewhere behind bars tonight, probably crying her eyes out. Yeah, Ashley, it's a tough decision for Monique Worrell. She's my counterpart in Orlando. She's the state attorney there. And when she ran for office, she said that no one under 14 should be arrested. This is going to put that to the test because you don't envision something so horrific. So what they've done is the police have made the arrest to keep her behind bars. So there'll be up to 21 days for the state attorney now to decide whether to pursue the adult charges of second degree murder. And the only way you can charge her as an adult is to charge her with murder. It's got to go through a grand jury and you've got to get an indictment. And then you can also add other lesser charges, which gives the judge the ability to levy juvenile sanctions. So just because she could be indicted and charged as an adult doesn't mean she won't get juvenile sanctions in the end. I have seen that play out actually on, um, uh, in a case in New Mexico, I saw a, a, a teenager who was tried as an adult and sentenced as a juvenile. And it was really fascinating to watch that play out. But since I, I'm talking about that, Dave, um, button that up with what do you think should happen to this mother? Because I personally, again, not a lawyer, I think that she should be charged with some kind of accessory type murder. I think she should be charged at least with felony murder or murder conspiracy. Those are options, aren't they? Well, it depends on the facts. As Ken said, you could charge her as a principal under the law if she gave her daughter the gun. Right now, the evidence that we know is that she gave her daughter the backpack. Now, if she said to the daughter, reach out and get my gun, that would be different. If she coached the daughter on the way there to say, when I give you my backpack, use the gun, that would be different. Then you could charge her as an accessory, as a principal to the murder. But right now, what we have is culpable negligence, which is similar to the case of the Crumbly parents in Michigan, which is a reckless mm. disregard for human life. It's gross negligence. It means that she didn't intend it, but she put her daughter and others in this very risky situation where a death could occur. And so that is a serious crime. It's a first degree felony, punishable by up to 30 years in prison. So my guess is that in the end, the mother will get more years in jail than the daughter. Well, let's hope. I mean, at, at 10, are we looking for, you know, retribution justice here against a 10-year-old? I mean, her life's over. Let's just be frank. And, and Dr. Duffy, you can weigh in on this as well, because um, part of the fascinating aspect of learning about the law is to learn about the intricacies that really screw it up or make it slide. And one of the things with uh, a trial is that you have to be competent. If you're gonna be a defendant, you have to be competent. And the definition is that you have to be able to help your attorney in your case and understand what's happening. I do not believe a 10 year old can do that, Dr. Duffy, do you? Not a chance, Ashley. You're you're absolutely right. Um, you talk about brain development, right? And you know, I, it, it's hard to break this all down to that. But a ten-year-old's brain, the frontal lobe, is underdeveloped, um, and it takes another ten or fifteen years for her to be really truly competent to weigh in on this. And to make matters a little bit worse, you know, in all likelihood, the idea that she was willing to commit this crime, to pull that trigger, does suggest that she was probably exposed to violence of some kind, domestic violence, violence on television, um, violence somewhere in her world beforehand in order to be willing to commit this act and not really seem to have a very keen understanding of what the consequences would be. So you just made me think of something. Um, and Dave, I think you need to weigh in on this because I really don't know the answer here. Typically, when you get a young person in custody, uh, you can't just interrogate them. They are minors and they need a 
parental, uh, you know, representative or a guardian ad litem or something. So in this case, mom can't be called <laughs> to the interrogation by the police because mom is a party to this and would incriminate herself. So what do you do with this kid? Because I think she's got a story to tell, right? I think she's going to tell what happened on the way to the fight. What did mom tell you about the backpack? How did you know to get that gun so quickly and cock it? If or was it already cocked and ready to go? Did she tell you if something happens, bring out the gun and fire? I mean, these are all things that could inculpate mom. So how much interrogation of this child can happen, given the fact that mom can't do it? Mom can't be there. Yeah, Ashley, the child has her own rights and she'll have her own lawyer and that lawyer will work with the child to give evidence that could point the finger at the mother. Because if the mother did coach her, did teach her how to use the gun, that is damning evidence against the mother. So that child's lawyer will work to her benefit, not to the mother. But there is a problem here and you identified it earlier with Ken Padowitz. The daughter, after she shot the victim dead said, you shouldn't have messed with my mother. Boy, that shows intent. It shows lack of remorse. And that's, I think, one of the factors going into the state attorney's decision when they decide whether to take this to a grand jury. Because if they take it to the grand jury, that sets the wheels in motion. If they don't take it to the grand jury, then she's not going to face accountability for the murder. Uh, Dr. Duffy, weigh in on this one, because what, what I just heard was that you shouldn't have messed with my mother, according to Dave, means it's, a, it's, a, it's intent and it's a lack of remorse. But as a 10-year-old, I could see her saying that, at, you know, watching a movie screen, too. A hundred percent. So, right. And I understand he's coming from the, a, a legal perspective. From a psychological perspective, those words are probably mimicked and aped from things that she has witnessed and heard maybe her entire life. And um, it is almost unthinkable from a psychological perspective that this child can be held accountable uh, for the crime or for even the meaning and intent behind those words. I understand there's a different legal definition, but from a psychological point of view, there's nothing I would want more for this child than you know, counseling for a very, very prolonged period of time um, because I can't imagine that she really, really could express and feel that type of intent. So Dave, um, yeah, yeah, this is so twisted. This whole thing is so twisted because here I am, I want the retribution against the mother that brought that little girl into a midnight rumble and then handed her a loaded gun. I mean, Dear God, I can't even believe I have to say that narrative out loud. And so I want that mom to pay. What that means is that little girl is going to lose her mom as well, as know that she killed a woman. There's really no uh, solution here that is going to feel good, especially, and this is my question, to the victim's family. How much say do right. they have in all of this? There's a constitutional amendment that was passed by Florida voters just a couple years ago called Marcy's Law that requires that prosecutors must listen to the victim's family. Now, the prosecutors don't have to abide by their wishes, but they have to hear them out and they have to let them be part of the process. And that is a big part of the decision making. Let's see what they say. But if you want this child to have counseling, and I agree with the doctor that that may be the ultimate answer here. She needs to get intensive counseling. One way to assure it is to set the criminal justice system into motion. If you decide not to charge this 10-year-old girl, then there's no uh, say that there's going to be any counseling. That she could just walk away and that's it. Her mother is gone and she is wherever she is with a foster family without any requirements under the law to go to counseling or to have any sanctions or any accountability. So that's one of the benefits of actually going to the grand jury is that at least it sets the wheels in motion to do something about what happened and can at least give the victim's family a little bit of say in what's going on. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at, at the Lionel Tate case, sticking a 12-year-old who at that time of sentencing was 15 uh, in the penal system and locking him up as an adult did not turn him into a good adult. It turned him into a kid who was released and almost immediately um, robbed the pizza man and ended up back in the clink for 30 years. So anybody who thinks that it's a good idea to lock up a 10 year old, especially as an adult, um, they need to do some studying about what it's like in prison for adults, let alone kids. 
Dave Ehrenberg, I love having you on because you are just, you know so much on the inside. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.